on uh, Wednesday to begin the 2019 General Assembly session. I am Delegate Luke Florian, representing the 52nd District here in Princeton County. The way we're going to proceed, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask each of my colleagues in the General Assembly to introduce themselves, and afterwards we will hear from you. The rules of engagement is as follows. Each citizen uh, has two minutes. John Bell. I represent the 87th district, uh, which is uh, Prince William and Loudoun County. Uh, glad to be here today and happy the weather is much better than it was last year when it was snowing on this day. Uh, look forward to hearing uh, about all your comments. Thank you all for taking the time to come and share them with us. We uh, think it's very important, greatly appreciate it. And I also invite you to please come down and visit us in Richmond during the session. Uh, the committee meetings, subcommittees are open to you. And we love hearing your voices and how you feel about legislation and we're considering. And we love meeting, meeting with you when you're down there. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I am Delegate Elizabeth Guzman. I proudly represent the 31st District, which includes parts of Neabsco, Potomac, and the Colts District. Uh, we are getting ready to start our session next Wednesday, and it's going to go on until Friday, February 22nd. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Look out, look up at lis.virginia.gov. If there are any deals that we are presenting that you would support, please come and uh, come and show up on the committee meetings. We need your support. Thank you for coming in today. Good afternoon, Delegate Hala Ayala, serving the 51st District, which you are in right now. Welcome. Thank you for coming out of your homes on this blistery day. Uh, I serve in Prince William's 51st, which includes Lake Ridge, Manassas, and a precinct in Dale City. So this year we are gearing up for the legislative session. We're excited about all the new legislation we're bringing to the forefront, and I can't wait to hear some of either your ideals, your feedback, on um, things that you are concerned about, issues, or recommendations that you may have. Take care and Happy New Year. All right, we're going to get started with uh, our speakers list that signed up online first. Um, first, I want to recognize, first off, a 
a couple of our colleagues are going to join us. I know Senator Surbell is caught on a flight uh, trying to get back here, but is not going to make it in time, and a couple others in transit. Uh, we also have uh, their aides and offices um, here present, so if you could also be recognized and raise your hand. We have mo most of the aides, um, so they're also here uh, available to assist and do some follow-ups. Um, so make sure to, to contact um, and follow up with them as well today. So our first speaker today is uh, Riley O'Casey, followed by Alan Muchnick, followed by Angela uh, Van Greer. And I apologize if any mispronunciation it is not of uh, the, the heart, but of rather the linguistic. So uh, just in advance. So, Ms. Casey. Good afternoon, members of the General Assembly. Thank you for the opportunity to share our input, suggestions, and comments on Governor Northern Superco's budget amendments. Um, I know we have some strong education fighters sitting up here, and I'm excited that you're here. My name is Riley O'Casey. I'm president of the Prince William Education Association. We represent all school employees in Prince William County Schools. Thank you for all that you do for the citizens of Prince William County. The Virginia Education Association looks forward to working with you as you make important decisions that we hope will reverse many of the challenges facing our public schools. The state investment in our public schools is increasing. But when you adjust for inflation, the state's contribution to our students is down almost 10% since 2009. Virginia teacher pay is ranked 49th in the nation by the Education Law Center at Rutgers University. Virginia teacher salaries are 9,200 under the national average. And the Virginia Department of Education shares that there are more than 1,000 unfilled teaching positions in the Commonwealth. As our students return from winter break this week, there are still hundreds of long-term subs in classrooms where school divisions weren't, were unable to find qualified teachers. And that biggest problem we know are teacher salaries. The VEA was grateful for the state investment of the 3% salary increase for SOQ funded positions in the adopted budget. Sadly, that increase is the largest offered by the Commonwealth in a decade. The governor's proposal to increase, increase that investment to 5% is, in the second year, represents a step in the right direction. In 2017, the General Assembly voted unanimously to make it the goal of the Commonwealth to pay teachers a salary that is at or above the national average. A goal without action is simply a dream and we are facing a nightmare when it comes to teacher salaries. As you make investments in salary, please remember that many of our school divisions are unable to pay for both the local share of the increase for state supported positions and 100% of the costs for the increase for those positions not supported with state dollars. Our educators are working two and three jobs to make ends meet. We are losing excellent teachers to other counties, and we are losing teachers altogether because of the dismal pay. I um, requested information from the Virginia State Police. I've learned that v VSP does not re uh, report or collect much useful data on HOV enforcement and has no estimate of HOV violations. During the, the, the uh, first 53 uh, weeks of tolling, only uh, 670 HOV violation substances were issued during routine HOV enforcement on 253 tolling days. On average, only 2.6 HOV violation summonses were issued for every eight hours of tolling. I'd like to run over the issues that um, I have addressed uh, regarding children's mental health. Um, uh, it's, um, I serve as an educator. I provide a program called uh, Ending the Silence, uh, which is to provide awareness about mental health conditions in children. However, once I raise awareness, it's very frustrating not to offer children, families, teachers uh, resources. Uh, and that's because we have a huge shortage of uh, uh, practitioners in the mental health field for children. That's child psychiatrists and other practitioners. So one thing I'd really like to advocate is uh, two ways that we can address this issue. One is by uh, uh, supporting uh, the Virginia Mental Health Access Program, or VMAP. 
and the governor's budget includes $1.23 million to scale up that program that would provide uh, primary care uh, physicians and pediatricians with the additional knowledge they need to address mental health, including tele telemedicine and consultations. The other is to um, increase the Medicaid reimbursement rates for private <coughs> care doctors. Uh, you have that other information. I hope you'll uh, take that into consideration uh, in the, uh, the written document. Thank you. I am the co-founder of Decoding Dyslexia Virginia and the mother of two sons with dyslexia who are 20 and 23. These young adults will never be fast readers, but they did adhere to a dyslexia-specific program, and they are both currently students in chemical engineering at Virginia Tech. Both Jack and Calvin were identified by first grade by a psychologist in private practice. Their path could have been much different without early identification. For your reference, 85% of prison inmates are illiterate. As of December 2018, there is a federal law that mandates screening for dyslexia for all prison populations. I'd like to read a key passage from the First Step Act of 2018. The Attorney General shall incorporate a dyslexia screening program into the system by screening for dyslexia during the intake process and each periodic risk reassessment of a prisoner. We ask for something new, similar for our youngest students in Virginia, to enhance the K through three Virginia Reading Screener with the addition of a five minute time test called RAM, or Rapid Automatic Naming. This addition was recommended in 2011 by a Virginia Senate Joint Resolution Study of Dyslexia Screeners for Kindergartens. The Harvard Joint Center of Housing <coughs> studies recently published a report with stunning statistics on housing and aging. By 2035, one in three U.S. households will be headed by someone 65 or older. This will lead with a substantial growth of seniors 65 or older in an American population. That's an increase of more than 30 million people over the next 20 years. Many of these baby boomers, the report notes, intend to age in place or stay in their homes or communities. In many ways, Prince William County is not ready. For example, only 1% of housing stock is currently equipped with no step entrance, single floor living, wide halls, and doorways to all wheelchairs, electrical control, reachable from a wheelchair, and lever-style handles on faucets and doors, safety grab bars for fall prevention, and that's just to name a few. We, Project Amanda House, would like very, very much for you to read the information presented, visit our website, become aware and connected to helping a bigger difference for the vulnerable population in your communities. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Senator Berg and I spent all morning at the Fairfax hearing. It, time has lost the whole meeting. Uh, but three minutes has not, so I'm going to keep going. Good afternoon. My name is David Broder. I'm proud to serve as the president of SEIU Virginia 512. Our union members, some of whom are here today and you'll hear from them, are Medicaid funded uh, home care workers in Fairfax County and Loudoun County employees, many of whom live here uh, in your districts in Prince William County. I'm reminded that one year ago, I stood in this exact place before you uh, and shared how just three days before, my wife had undergone life-saving surgery to remove her breast cancer. And I asked you to help us pay forward the amazing benefit of the health care that we have by doing everything in your power to pass Medicaid expansion. I'm thrilled to be back here one year later to say that Liz is doing great. She is being chased around by our two daughters right now. Um, and to say thank you. Thank you for making Medicaid expansion. I work in Fairfax County government as a human service assistant in the adult and aging division. I also serve as elected president of the Fairfax County government employees union 
of SEID Virginia 512. County employees like me work hard every day to help our communities be safer, healthier, more successful places for all Virginians. In my job, I serve the community by serving as an advocate for older adults and transporting adults to medical appointments and food pantries. I see firsthand how hardworking people are struggling in our community. I see how people who have worked their lives, who have worked their entire lives, uh, cannot retire and age with dignity on their own. They need help with the high price of health care, housing, food, and transportation. Earlier this year, a landmark Oxfam <coughs> study found that Virginia is the worst state to work in the nation, uh, to work for in the nation based on low wages and the lack of worker protection and benefits. Together we can fix this. That's why I'm asking you to work on this budget, on this year's budget, to make Virginia a better place for working families. As a resident of this county for the past 15 years, I would like to say thank you for the work that you all do every day to continue to make Prince William County an amazing place to live. I currently work for Fairfax County as a human service worker for SNAP and Medicaid. Through my position, I've seen firsthand the importance of quality health care for all Americans. The passage of Medicaid expansion last year has opened the doors for so many Virginians who deserve health care. While the work that comes along with this expansion is difficult and challenging at times, I can honestly say that as a county employee, it is completely worth it in the end. Thank you for your leadership in Medicaid, in the, I'm sorry, in expanding Medicaid. <coughs> the population that I serve are low-income families who are who more often times than not struggle with basic necessities such as food and shelter, let alone the cost of health care. It is my strong belief that law-abiding individuals in this state and in this country deserve access to quality and affordable health care. Good afternoon. I'm Delegate Jennifer Carroll Boyd. I represent the sec second district and Prince William at Stafford. Um, I very, greatly apologize about my tardiness. I had another event um, earlier today, but I'm excited to hear all of your concerns, questions, and feedback. And I'm glad to see so many faces here, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Christine here next, followed by Eric Fagerholm. Hello, everyone. That's how we say hello in my country. My name is Christina Mahatishvili, and I'm an exchange student from the Republic of Georgia. I want to thank Virginia legislature members here today for your support, allowing exchange students to attend schools in Virginia. I'm having a great year experiencing life as a teenager and seeing many historic and educational events. The teachers at Hilton are very supportive, and I'm enjoying this little program. I have provided you a copy of a recipe of Georgian traditional food called Khachapuri, cheese bread. I recently won a nationwide competition with this recipe, and my parents were very proud and happy. Thank you again for the opportunity you have provided to me and other exchange students. My Baba, that's how we say thank you in my country. Go with us. <laughs> The next two, uh, by Senators Marsden and Stanley, uh, Senate Bills 1043 and 1065 are in regards to the commercial sale of pets, dogs in particular. Senator Marsden's will close a loophole where we have very good standards here in Virginia, but dogs come in from out of state that don't have the same standards. We want to elevate all the dogs that are sold to that standard. And Senator Stanley's is very interesting. Uh, there are predatory lending and loaning practices on a variety of commodities, but same thing with pets. This will protect consumers and will protect the dogs. The last one we oppose, it's a bill, uh, farmers have plenty of methods to kill uh, so-called nuisance species, and uh, this one, uh, HB1696, uh, wants to expand that so people can just have in, a, in their own automobile, on their own property, shoot animals from a vehicle that's bad for a lot of reasons. Good morning, Prince William delegation. Good afternoon. It's David's fault. Um, um, uh, what's being passed out in front of you are a is a list of, of additions to the legislative priorities that our current county board has given to you. Um, while they had some good ideas, I think there's a lot more we can do to move the ball forward here in our county. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I am running for the Board of County Supervisors here in Prince William County Field Office on this is I believe we should be looking at one clear message, and that's protecting the lives and cherishing the dignity of every single person in our community. 
So what does it look like? What you have on top is an executive summary, so I'm not going to just go through the whole thing. Um, that looks at looking at statewide standards for jurisdictions that have school resource officers and school security officers. So we actually get some uniformity in how we're doing things in our schools and actually providing funding for the proper training for them. Cultural sensitivity training, racial bias training, how to deal with CITs, things like that. My name is Lucia Anderson. I'm a member of One Virginia 2021. I'm here to urge you to support the joint resolution sponsored by Senator Hanger and Senator Law, a constitutional amendment that would establish an independent commission to draw legislative district boundaries. The idea was formulated and refined by a committee that includes former legislators and policy staff from both parties, as well as independent experts in elections and the Virginia Constitution. Um, I've given you a graphic that shows how to select such a committee and the executive summary of the constitutional amendment, as well as a copy of my remarks in case you forget. <laughs> the next scheduled redistricting takes place in 2021, following the 2020 census. In order to get an independent commission set up before 2021, a constitutional amendment must pass the 29-2019 legislative session and the 2020 session. An independent commission would use common sense criteria to produce new and simpler legislative districts, avoiding districts that favor or hamper any political party or candidate. A poll released December 5th by the Waison Center for Public Policy at Chris Christopher Newport University shows that 78% of Virginians support redistricting reform. 78%. I'm Pat Widener, and I'm here today representing Indivisible Nova West. I want to thank you for your support for Medicaid expansion. It means so much to us, and I want you to know how inspiring you are to us. We are one of 6,000 Indivisible groups across America, and we appreciate you freshmen who were brave enough to run and go in there and face what you did. And you mentors, you experienced legislatures who helped them along the way. So we're so grateful to each and every one of you. The first point I want to make is a little bit out of the norm because it's not really state legislation. The two things that I think are very urgent, because all of you have the ear of our senators and U.S. congressmen. We have found out that in the last couple of days, because of the government shutdown, the USDA is not delivering food as they should be. As an example, senior citizens went to get their senior boxes, which they get about once a month. That provides extra nutrition for our marginalized people over 65. And they were turned away and said, sorry, please try again later. Hopefully the USDA can deliver. Please use your influence with, we do, we're calling them all the time, we're emailing them, but we know that you have their ear too. Please try to help our seniors and our other people. I'm concerned about SNAP and other Medicaid and other <coughs> programs starting to lose the support. My name is Carol Proven, and I live in the western part of Prince William County in Broad Run. I am here today as the president of the League of Women Voters of the Prince William area to urge you to vote for the ratification of the Equal Rights Amendment. Our League has a deep commitment to making Virginia the 38th state to ratify the ERA. Looking at you, I know I'm preaching to the choir. For most of you have sponsored or have been co-sponsors um, of the uh, resolutions to ratify ERA this year or in the past. I just have a few points to make. Most voters in Virginia are in favor of ratification. A Christopher Newport University poll released in December estimates that 81% of Virginia voters do support ratification. Every international con constitution written since 1950 <coughs> affirms gender equality. Only 16% of the world's nations do not include gender equality in their constitution. It does not make me proud or happy to know that the U.S is in that 
in company of countries like Iran and Sudan. It is both embarrassing and sad. My name is Chris Casey. Uh, this year I'll mark 29 years as a resident of the community in Montclair, Virginia. Um, Montclair is a large community. I'm sure you're familiar with it. With a population of almost 20,000, which makes it larger than many Virginia cities, and in fact larger than more than 35 Virginia counties. Um, and I'm happy to bring you some exciting news from the December issue of our magazine, Montclairian. The uh, uh, guidelines on decorative objects have been changed, and previously prohibited mailbox decorations are now allowed 30 days within, uh, within a holiday. Uh, I've never been moved myself to decorate my mailbox, uh, but I do sometimes want to put a sign in my yard that says, vote for insert your name here. But the same section of Montclair's guidelines doesn't regulate that or restrict it. It prohibits it. I'm not allowed to do that. Now, in 1994, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that the display of a political yard sign uh, is a protected First Amendment right. Since 2004, Virginia law has prevented any locality uh, from creating a legislation that prohibits useful yard signs. So how is it that my property owners association can override this right that our federal and state government makes so clear uh, should be protected? Good afternoon. I'm Christina Spittler. I'm here on behalf of the Prince William County Bar Association. And I'm here to advocate for adequate funding for our judicial branch of government, specifically the Prince William County Court System. Having a well-funded judicial system and one that works at all levels from the circuit court, general district court, juvenile court, and indeed the clerk's office is absolutely critical to the administration of justice and indeed to our democracy. The, course, the court system is a core function of government. It requires adequate resources to do its job, from adequate funding for technology to personnel to the ability to ensure all of these functions of the court are adequately functioning for the administration of justice. Indeed, the courts affect every component of our community. Family issues, such as custody disputes, adoptions, marriage license, probate of wills, criminal and traffic matters, business disputes. As you can see, it affects every part of our community, and when it is not adequately funded, it in fact is not justice. While the courts are also working with Prince William County to ensure the funding of our court system, I strongly urge you to ensure that as part of your duties, that you are adequately funding our judicial branch, and particularly for the Prince William County court system, to ensure that we have justice here in Prince William County for all our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to reflect on what happened here a few weeks ago when the county uh, supervisors were trying to hear about the ERA and the opposition to it and the things that you were going to be hearing. Uh, totally floored me. Uh, one was rampant nudity. Women were going to rip off their tops because men can. Um, we were going to have shared locker rooms in the middle schools and high schools. Uh, the LGBT community was going to be sharing our bathrooms, which they have for whatever. Yes. So, yeah. And then, of course, rampant abortion, abortions, and abortions. Um, I was stunned by this. I was actually floored. Where is all this coming from? And I came up with two conclusions. One, nobody read the law. <laughs> and two, fear. Now we already had the first part of the section, which that no state or, uh, or, the, or the law shall uh, be abridged by the United States by the state of account of sex. But the section two is equally important. Congress shall have the power to enforce by appropriate legislation the provisions of this article. Therefore, no, I can't go run off and rip off my clothes. We already have laws against public nudity. You know, I have a child who's in high school and another one in middle school. I don't want shared locker rooms, okay? I'm fine with that. We won't pass these laws. These are the fear mongerings that we have to fight against coming up in this legislation. It's so important. And I ask myself, where is this fear coming from? This fear has been around since the beginning of our country. Every time the United States has tried to equal the playing field for minorities, the white privileged class has been fighting against it because they're afraid that their part of the American pie will be denied 
when other people can get it. They think the American pie is finite. That's incorrect. As soon as we empower other people from minority communities to be active members of our society and put in equally to the economy, the pie gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And everybody can get a slice. It's time not to be fearful. At the end of the meeting, one of the county supervisors was saying she's a Christian and she's never going to support it because, once again, of abortion. I'm a Christian, too. I'm going to end with one of my favorite Bible verses. And it's very simple. It's be not afraid. Be not afraid. It's 2019. It's time for women to be a truly equal part of our nation. And I know, standing here looking at you all, you guys can get it done. So thank you. Protective orders have grown exponentially. Uh, an awful lot of people uh, seeking protective orders, police on the street are using protective orders, and I think they should. It's a good, uh, it's a good process. But uh, there aren't a lot of lawyers involved in protective orders unless they're married up to, uh, to a criminal case. And they aren't always that way. So a lot of times, uh, those will come before us and, and add to the volume that we have. Um, to, to address some of these problems, what we've gone to is the triage in the courthouse. I don't take every case into the courtroom. I go up with the clerks at times and work on cases that are walking so that people aren't turned away or required to come back on another day. So if you're coming in for a simple continuance, you have a college exam, you have a, um, a health issue or something, I'll grant those continuances at the front with the clerks rather than take it into the courtroom. Now, more serious matters like protective orders, you're still taking them into the court in doing that process. Um, we're losing more clerks. I lost a clerk before Christmas to Fairfax County because they supplement those bails. I lost one last week. Um, Again, for other issues in, in terms of better pay. Um, whatever you can do to help us in those areas, technology, I think, is important to take a look at, too. My name is Joshua Trapp, and I am a 17 year old senior at Colton High School in Pennsylvania. I have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. I was diagnosed in 2008. This disease hampers my ability to complete physical tasks. Although I am not as gifted physically. I am very strong in school. I take many AP classes and am planning on going to college. I am here today to advocate for more disability, developmental disability waiver software. Um, I need a waiver because although I am very gifted academically, I cannot do many things on my own physically. I depend on many different types of equipment to help me during the day at school and uh, all my other daily activities. Getting a waiver slot means that I would be able to have skilled nursing and assistance at all times throughout my 24 hours if I go to college. I plan on going to James Madison University and pursuing a career in intelligence <coughs> analysis. In order to realize my dream, I need another waiver slot. I have been passed over three or four times, um, even though I've been a priority one um, slot. Um, and if I get this, if I get a waiver, I will be able to go to college and realize my dream, um, even though I am not gifted. So I use, I'm an advocate for disabilities and I really am hoping that more waiter spots are open so I can go to college and um, move on with my City of Manassas appointee to the tri jurisdictional Prince William Commission on Aging. Notice it doesn't have a little county, it's the Prince William Commission on Aging. A uh, document being provided to you as our budget and legislative positions 
and also as one of the founding partners of the Northern Virginia Aging Network as their document and hot off the press, it's so hot off the press that I had to put a label to put the approval date, is the Omni-Ride Potomac Rappahannock Transportation Commission's but uh, their legislative position. So also please ignore the word draft on the back. I did notice that down the way below. Uh, the reason you, I provide you that is our first position, of course, is we are supporting fully the work of the PRT, I'm just going to say PRTC. I keep the, 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 it's easier. Uh, the, the work of PRTC in the development of the strategic plan, particularly as board president for Independence Power and Center, Center for Independent Living, we will be their partner as they evolve paratransit in the greater Prince William area. The second one under insurance counseling, uh, just for, so you are aware that, may, that the Virginia Insurance Counseling and Assistance Program in each one of the area agencies on aging also work with the senior state senior Medicaid control and the Office of Attorney General Medicaid Fraud Control Unit, and I believe you're already receiving that report on how much the state has recouped in Medicaid fraud. Good afternoon. I'm Chrissy, founder of Y Incorporated, a local nonprofit. Last year, I stood here before you and gave you ugly stats about the opioid crisis, which in this county has not gotten any better. But thanks to the Medicaid expansion, Hopefully now we will see the death toll go down. Prince Williams County is still far behind. Today I come to you with a stress on the understanding of mental health and better access to resources. This past year we held discussion nights on topics such as opioids and addiction, internet safety, human trafficking, gangs, bullying, mental health, and suicide prevention. Individuals who are more likely to fall into these destructive paths was due to lack of mental health and the lack of resources for mental illness. We don't have enough resources. In many cases of heading down this destructive path of the topics that we had um, was a case of an ACEs, high ACEs score, adverse childhood experiences. These are a score from zero to 10, abuse, mental, physical, or emotional, bullying, violence of, by another child, sibling, or adult, homelessness, in the household, substance abuse, mental illness, domestic violence, incarceration, parental abandonment, divorce and loss, involvement in child welfare system, medical trauma, natural disasters and war, neglect, emotional and physical, racism, sexism, and other form of discrimination, and violence in the community. As this is your year for re-election, please, I encourage you to put on these discussion nights. We have great partnerships with the DEA, FBI, our amazing local police department. Have these discussion nights. Educate yourselves and your constituents. Thank you. Uh, I'm here to uh, encourage you to vote for the Equal Rights Amendment. Um, I understand that many of you have uh, sponsored the amendment, and, uh, and, and it's, it's really a very positive uh, situation. So I won't hold up any more time, but just say thank you very much, and uh, you'll all be getting a postcard from the next couple of days. <laughs> thank you. What we need most is legislation that will encourage residents and small businesses to embrace uh, renewable energy, particularly solar. And it's absolutely essential that we, that we do that. Uh, so I hope that uh, it, one of the barriers that has stood in the way of that, unfortunately, has been our utility companies, Dominion and Allegheny. And I hope that, that you can uh, support legislation that will encourage and, if necessary, force them to move more robustly into uh, renewable energy. We need that as a source of our electricity in the state. So please, anything you can do on that would be welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Walton, and I am a resident of Gainesville. Uh, I'm here this afternoon to urge you uh, to pass the ERA in 2019. Let's have equality for all Virginian women. Let's move Virginia into the 21st century. Thank you very much in advance. So I'm uh, asking for support for various uh, pieces of legislation 
to control the firearms in Virginia. Um, because we need to be sure that um, our children are safe. There are, there are ways to make sure that guns are safe and secure in homes. Um, we only, surely, people only need to buy one gun a month, not more. And so, um, and I know that there's um, thoughts about having what's called a red flag measure, so that people who are look at appear to be at, um, at risk for using a handgun improperly. Good afternoon, all. Brian Fields, Town of Delphi Town Council Member. As many of you know, on November the 20th, during the work session, the town of Dumfries became the first town in Prince William County to adopt a resolution in support of ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment. This has been in sharp contrast to the County Board of Supervisors who did not pass this uh, resolution, but Dumfries passed it seven to zero. We, members of the town of Dumfries, are gladly behind supporting our measure and supporting it for the state so that we can become the 38th state, so that we can become that wonderful state that brings it across the board to ratify for ERA. Also, I'd like to talk to you about the coal ash issue. As you know, uh, Dominion Power or Virginia Power plant is right there, right outside of our Dumfries town limits but it definitely affects the citizens of the town and also the immediate citizens right outside of town. Many of you have worked on this. I'm very thankful of that, and we greatly appreciate it. So we definitely are behind you. We talk about it many a times, and I also encourage you to take a tour of the facility. I myself, as being a representative from the town, have toured the facility to see exactly what they do out there at the Cold Ash Ponds that are out there in, uh, in the county. This will affect us in the future one way or the other. Whether it's being moved, whether it stays there in cap, we need to come up with a solution and a solution that is not affecting our environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. followed by Barbara Laramore. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ann Wheeler. I'm from Hugh Market, representing myself and a lot of the other groups I belong to. You know, I sit here and I look at our Prince William County delegation and I realize how lucky we are. Um, you know, I believe that if it wasn't for all you sitting up there today, we wouldn't have Medicaid expansion and some of the progressive things that happened last year. And so I would encourage you to act as a Prince William County delegation together, um, which comes to some of my other remarks. Uh, I listened to someone speak about the, the governor's um, proposal for raises for teachers. I would suggest that could be a floor as opposed to a ceiling. You know, there, there was always, if someone wants to champion further increases in teacher pay um, as a delegation, you could do that. Um, I know from looking at our own teachers and around the, the state, our teachers are underpaid. So we're taking a small bedroom school and making it into a mega school. So what problems we were having just last year ha are going to be compounded with almost a thousand kids going to Lake Ridge. So people over the last 10 years have been trying to get these no U-turn signs at Lake Ridge to no avail through all the hoops that people have been jumping through. So finally, Delegate Ayala has been looking into it for me and, and has found hopefully something that we can do on your level to be able to say, yes, we can put this no U-turn sign so the police can come in and actually ticket and make a difference um, in terms of changing people's uh, strategies of getting their kids to and from school. Um, the reason this is so important to me is because right now this could be named the Lakewood Elementary School Bill, or this could be named the Delegate Ayala Bill. Um, what I don't want to happen, <laughs> what I don't want to happen is this to be named after little Timmy, who was hit by a car and died because we were too slow in acting and getting a stinking sign up. Um, so. Please, if you could help me at all, um, helping Delegate Ayala, um, I will be, as soon as we get the language together, we'd like to get a petition um, together to make sure that this happens so that, and please, I invite you all to come to Lake Adelman and just see how crazy it is. Um, thank you. I appreciate your time. Good luck in 2019. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, You know, I hate being here to talk about this. 
We've got ERA, special needs, we have uh, senior citizens, equality across the board, and we're having to come to our state delegates to talk about a no U-turn sign, but that's the way the law is. It is so uh, ambiguous that local law enforcement has nothing to enforce. VDOT hasn't seen what I've seen yesterday morning and what every walker and every parent has seen every morning they come into the school. So I'm coming to you asked to support, create a bill, no U-turn in my mind is just the beginning. Because the second you have no U-turn, uh, now you're going to have parents dropping their kids off on the other side of the street where there's no sidewalk and they're going to be playing Frogger every day. More work needs to be done. We need to have it safer inside of the school and out. Thank you so much. Thank you, David. Uh, next is January to mid-2018, mid we collected over 35,000 pounds of trash. We have a lot of trash in our streams. And I'm here to ask you all to help support citizen volunteer in cleanups because most of the stream jobs with stream cleanups, they are being done by citizens. citizens. And I am here to ask for your support to help through the, through the public works department to support the citizen science, you know, citizen science programs. For example, we had the stewardship volunteer, volunteer certificates that was given out by the former governor. But because of defund of the environmental programs, we no longer have that. And I was so happy that we had the first big cleanup event by um, sponsored by Supervisor Principe, and I was so thrilled to have Senator Scott Sorovi with us. That shows that a lot of people are showing interest in water quality, and we do have a lot of people who are out there to help Virginia have clean streams. And I'm, I'm working on other aspects to support that, but I'm here to call on you to help support that goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Efficiency is where we have a, a huge opportunity, um, and it's the cleanest energy there is. You, you put in LED lights, and you use less energy, and you have the same amount of light. Um, it's the best energy there is. We, Dominion is out of 51 public utilities, out of the 51 largest public utilities in the United States, Dominion ranks 50 in terms of energy efficiency. <laughs> Virginia does not have an energy efficiency resource standard. That's another thing that could be done to encourage energy efficiency across the state. Um, so energy policy, uh, I'm actually on a personal level a little concerned I may end up in violation of Virginia law. I put in solar panels in 2010. And I didn't understand at the time why the uh, installer only installed 85% of my annual usage. Um, I do understand now that has to do with state law. But I've made my home more efficient since 2010. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet many, many survivors. I've been a member of uh, Moms Demand for over six years now. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet many, many survivors who've lost a family member, like the Parkers, who lost their daughter Allison on, on live television. Every single one of those survivors' families has said that they were not involved in the gun violence prevention movement until they lost a family member. And that's why I'm speaking to you, and that's why I'm speaking to the people here. Let's not wait until it's one of our family members. Let's not wait until it's Prince William School. Let's not wait until it's shown on local television. Um, we're supporters, strong supporters of the Second Amendment. We just want some sensible legislation. I know our governor is very strongly in back of this. Um, and many people up here. I'm hoping that you all can start to reach across the aisle. There is absolutely no way that this should be a partisan issue. This is, this is horrendous and it affects all of us. So um, thank you for what you have done and you are doing and please get, get some of your colleagues on board with this so that when we say goodbye to our children in the morning, we feel certain that we'll see them again in the afternoon. Yeah. Of the 48 states who have passed meaningful autism insurance reform, 41 states cover children higher of age than Virginia, and 15 of them have no age cap whatsoever.
Just because you turn age 11 doesn't mean all of a sudden your autism goes away. Last year we brought a bill and we had a lot of promises made and our bill died in the house and yet they did pass some budget money to put funding in for state employees in the budget in the state to age 11, to, excuse me, age 18. So you know what that means? If you pass a bill this year up to age cap of age 18, there's no fiscal impact because guess what? You've already got the money there. So what we're asking you to do, as, and I know you also have supported us every year, we need you to convince the other legislators, and we'll be working on it too, don't get me wrong, but it's important that you help us convince the other legislators. This population is being denied care by medical doctors, by social services. I, my son has the Medicaid waiver. I cannot find a Medicaid provider who will care for my son because they cannot be reimbursed at the level that the, his intensity of needs requires. So no one will cut, take care of them. Thank you so much for listening. It is exciting that over the past 10 years, our system has experienced an 18% growth in overall attendance. Uh, what is troublesome is funding for parks has never kept up in the areas of critical needs. As compared to fundings for state parks in all other 50 states, our system ranks consistent, consistently low uh, and even dead last in funding at times. During this year's General Assembly session, the Virginia Association of Parks is asking on behalf of Virginia Division of State Parks for funding in a multitude of budget amendments. These requests uh, include state park field staffing, probably the most important. We need 63 additional full-time positions across the state to manage the essential operations within existing and operational state parks. We cannot do more with less personnel. We cannot do more. With State Parks is requesting underfunded annual needs. And that's the end of my time. So. The main thing I think that he wanted to say was that during his professional career, from 1973 to 2004, he had the honor and privilege of opening up Sky Meadows State Park. And he has um, also spent 19 years of his life with his mistress Lisa, Lisa Bainey State Park. <laughs> and I think it is a wonderful <laughs> park. And I had to share him all those years. <laughs> and um, we really do need state park funding. I think that you will see on the priorities list that um, there are many areas that need to be funded. You guys get it. You know about coal ash. <coughs> you know, it doesn't just set up a Google alert for coal ash. I want to take care of Senator dances area and go there and talk to those people but we need you guys to speak to your colleagues there's a lot of misrepresentations out there luckily for us the Tourian and um, Jennifer Foy and Scott held our town hall meeting a couple weeks ago we actually had a dialogue we were allowed to talk we got some really good information that night the same thing didn't happen throughout our state so thank you for that but we really need you to go back and help them I could just for one quick second people are scared <coughs> about the cost. Unfortunately, Scott has made me, excuse me, Senator Serval has made me realize that there's laws that say that there's built-in profits for utility funding, and I'm never taking on that battle, and neither is he. But just because you don't live next to a coal ash pond doesn't mean you could be living on top of coal ash. And secondly, the cost of recycling that everybody's upset about we keep talking about the cost, but no one yet has mentioned the amount of revenues that Dominion is going to bring in by selling the coal ash to the recyclers. So maybe we can get some clarification on what we expect to offset the expenses so the public isn't as terrified as Dominion's spin has been in the news. Thank you. So, Patty Merrill, I just want to tell you thank you for all your advocacy. And myself and State Senator Scott Serval will be introducing the Water Quality and Safety Act that was endorsed by the governor that will require recycling and removal of coal ash. And I'm very optimistic that we're going to get something done this session. Thank you. Yes. Good afternoon. I am Cozy Bailey. I'm the uh, president of the uh, Prince William branch of NAACP. It's a pleasure being uh, able to speak before you this afternoon. I don't have any handouts uh, because uh, primarily uh, you will all see us again uh, statewide on January the 27th when uh, across the Commonwealth of Virginia you will be 
assaulted, you will be visited, you will be deluged with uh, representatives from the NAACP. And we'll talk about all of our priorities at that time. I did want to stand before you, though, uh, this afternoon to reinforce some things that I'm sure that all of you already know. Uh, we are proud, again, of our Prince William delegation. And we are proud to say that we are in sync uh, with the kinds of things that the NAACP advocates for. Uh, I was at a, a function this morning, and someone said, why, is, why are you here? Because the NAACP is apolitical. And I had to correct them. I said, no, we're nonpartisan. But the NAACP, by definition, is a political organization for political advocacy. So we thank you for your continued support for the right to vote and the end of voter suppression within the Commonwealth of Virginia. We thank you for supporting a higher livable minimum wage for all citizens of the Commonwealth of Virginia. We thank you for the support of Medicaid expansion and what that means to so many people that you've already heard, heard from this afternoon. We thank you for your continued support and you've heard so many uh, stories this afternoon and this morning about the requirement for better mental health uh, opportunities. That's why my wife, Andrea Daly, is on the uh, State uh, Mental Health Board, uh, as she continues to work for those things in the county. We thank you for recognizing that there needs to be an end to cash bail, because that is justice by money. We thank you that you understand the need for a more logical way to redraw our legislative boundaries, and we know that you're going to support that. We thank you for your continued support for fair housing initiatives and to help us in this county uh, pr provide a better solution to our transportation issue. I know that all of you already know those things. And so don't feel bad on the 22nd if you just get a, a drive-by visit because we're going to be focusing on those people who don't understand the importance of these issues. So thank you very much for your continued support. I support my family, myself and my family with STR. If I'm not able to use my house to support myself and my family, please give me a job that I can pay my bills and support my family. Please, please help. Don't take my life away. Thank you. My name is Laura Nicewander. I live in Alexandria, <coughs> and I am co-founder of a group, Citizens for STR which is short-term rentals. As you all are probably aware, Fairfax County recently uh, passed regulations that severely restrict uh, homeowners' rights to be able to get their home out. Um, my story is that I am a single mother, I have two special needs children, and I might look like a regular person, but I'm not. I suffer from an invisible illness, and that keeps me from working a regular nine-to-five job. Being able to support myself by being able to rent my home is critical. It is a godsend to be able to do that. And if I can't do that, I'm going to end up on state assistance. I'm already this close. Both of my kids are already on Medicaid. Um, there are members of our group that I represent, and we all have stories just like Sydney right before me. And there, we all have a financial need that it meets. Uh, we have been working with Senator Evan to craft a bill, and I would ask that when it comes before you in committee that um, you consider, I'm sure that today you've heard a lot of pleas for education, mental health, and other very <coughs> important community services, and these are millions of dollars that the income and the tax revenue could go towards funding. My name is Tricia Moore. I'm the founder of Citizens for SDR, short-term rentals. We are truly a grassroots organization that was formed nine months ago, and we're for focused on the restoration of property rights in Fairfax, Virginia. But we represent hundreds of people in Fairfax, thousands of people in the state of Virginia, and all of the property owners throughout the Commonwealth. We represent single moms that are supporting their special needs kids, the elderly that need additional income, and this is a way for them to actually be able to pay their medical bills, pay their general bills and pay their mortgages. We have veterans in our groups. We have a nun in our group. We have disabled members. We have teachers in our group. These are normal people that are living within the Northern Virginia area that are utilizing their properties and their property rights to rent their properties out to increase their income and actually pay their bills. Our members use the supplemental income 
just so they can stay in the Northern Virginia area. Um, the General Assembly, a couple of years ago, passed a simple bill asking that counties just register short-term rentals. In Virginia Beach and Lexington, they way overstepped the legislation that was associated with that, the general meaning of that. And what happened was the General Assembly last year forced them to back it back down and just register short-term rentals. We're asking that you do the same thing for us. Unfortunately, Fairfax County massively overregulated it. They did way beyond what Lexington did. Many, many of our members actually called Fairfax County in advance of doing this to ask them, is it legal to do this? Can I do this? And we were all told yes. I actually was told this about 10 years ago. I called zoning, I waited for a call back, and I was advised, yeah, there's no problem doing this. Many of our members did this. So what Fairfax County passed was significantly worse than what Lexington and Virginia Beach did, which they completed, the General Assembly just overturned last year. So right now we are working with Senator Evan. We um, are expecting to have a bill come out probably within the next couple of weeks. We're gonna be asking for everybody's support on this. It went through very easily last year um, for Lexington and Virginia Beach. We estimate that just in the Fairfax County region that it's about $500 million in revenue that's lost. I think Francisco, I come here, the doctor was sitting here in the dream room to talk about uh, to keep in-state tuition for undocumented uh, students, young adults, and also for the dream community, and also for um, qualifying, or something to qualify the, that community as well for uh, financial aid. Uh, my story is uh, I'm going to college right now. Um, I don't qualify for financial aid, but I, I was forced to do uh, through another third party organization. They forced me to, uh, to apply. So they left that. Um, I got a call by the government, said I did. Now I do not, supposedly. Now I'm left with $15,000 debt, which wasn't really my fault because they kind of forced me to do it. Um, I want um, my fellow uh, community to go through the same thing. Um, you know, I've been through the whole school system here. I grew up almost 20 years in this country. I don't, I don't even remember my country that much. So now that debt, it, left to me. I'm the only one providing for my family right now, for my mom, single mother, and how am I going to do that? You know, I have that debt behind my back now, which wasn't really my fault. Um, and so I'm here to, you know, ask you guys for your support to pass something that help those dreamers that come here to get a better education uh, so they can qualify for in-state tuition, just like any other, any other um, young student, any citizen resident, you know, they have the rights as well. Um, and also to keep in state tuition because then it's descended, then I think it'll be a big detriment to the community as well. Thank you so much. So, my name is Roy Chahill, and I have a big label on my front of my chest that says, just like Salem Witches, and on the back, a target who fell this 20 years ago in the end of the state and found myself on the sex offenders register. What I went to court um, following this is the statute 9.1 910. That statute is the checklist to get off of the registry of which I am eligible for. The Virginia State Police told me this in 2017. I went to circuit court. The problem is, back in 2000, um, like 1998, when the General Assembly put this whole chapter together, chapter 9, um, what a nightmare for those of y'all that were there then. But there's a couple things that weren't written real clearly so that the judges can't follow through all the time. Um, and specifically when you see the statute 9.1, 910, it just talks about the part I'm getting at is a disqualifier, which is several, but the one little phrase is two or more offenses. So, the, uh, Mr. Albo, who I've spoken with, said, boy, you're not going to have any problem in the circuit court to get yourself off that list. The thing is, he knows it means two or more offenses where you were at liberty in between. In other words, a reoffender. We're not going to let you off that register. What the General Assembly met when they wrote it is um, just that, that a person that was at liberty. But the way that the Commonwealth Attorney reads it in plain language is because in 2000, my one single offense got me.